Welcome to Data Science with Harshad. Now, if the skill section of your resume states Python, R, deep learning, machine learning, AI, you're an expert, and you're still wondering why you get rejected, then you should keep watching this video. Now, there are millions of people who are looking for a job in data science and the opportunities are limited. So how do you stand apart from the pack? Now, this video tries to capture everything you need in order to create or build a really good portfolio so good that they cannot ignore you. Now, why should you firstly create a portfolio? So let me explain you. For someone who has really, uh, you know, who has a master's degree or a PhD or, uh, you know, uh, eight to ten years of experience in data science it's not that difficult for them to get a job in data science why because they have established that credibility that they can get things done and this is what employers look for now for someone who does not have a master's or a phd or relevant experience then they should establish this credibility via their work that is their portfolio so you should be working on some really good projects basically in order to create a really good portfolio of work that should showcase your potential in data science. Now, how should you go about building that kick-ass portfolio? I'm going to explain you step by step in this particular video. Step one is identify yourself. Now, hopping on from one career portal to another and applying for any job that mentions data in it, that's not a smart move. Now, it would add to your stress and your workload only to learn that they have rejected you. So firstly, you should understand the kind of jobs there are. So there are jobs that are really math heavy, that is really uh, that are really research heavy just like a quant uh, analyst at a hedge fund or a bioinformatician that requires really a great amount of biology or domain expertise so there are uh, there are fields which are more generalist there are fields which require more focused uh, experience and study <clears throat> so uh, first you should understand where do you lie are you a more of a generalist person or are you uh, or do you like to work on more focused areas it can be any industry be it finance be it uh, e-commerce be it uh, uh, social media networks or anything that you love so you should first figure out then after you figure out that you are what kind of person you are you should learn what sort of skill set you are interested in developing so it could be or what you have so it could be data engineering which would require you to build data infrastructure set up pipelines and you know set up infrastructure and automate those pipelines uh, and uh, you should understand how cloud computing works and uh, be able to deploy your pipelines uh, on uh, cloud servers then second thing is data analysis there where you keep understanding you basically uh, work on uh, cleaning data you work on uh, getting data in a form where it is more usable uh, and where it can be used for further processing uh, through machine learning models machine learning algorithms deep learning algorithms then you have uh, these uh, really deep scientists research scientists uh, and uh, ai engineers machine learning engineers which uh, have really good uh, background in mathematics you should first figure out narrow down your search first figure out what kind of a person are you are and what sort of skill sets are you interested in developing and what sort of skill sets skill sets do you already have now step two is study the job descriptions now if you figured out who you what kind of person you are and you should study job description what they really ask for and if you uh, if you'll spend enough time looking at a few job description you'll find that they ask for experience even from a fresher out of a college so that takes us back to the first question which is how do i compensate for the experience factor so the answer is projects now if you say that you already knew that 
So let me tell you something that you probably didn't know. Now this portfolio of work cannot have your analysis over MNIST or Titanic dataset from Kaggle. It needs to be something more than that. Actually, quite a lot of more than that. So let me dive into how you should go about what sort of projects you should pick up in order to include those in your portfolio and create a really good portfolio of work. Go. Step three is showcasing your expertise via projects. Now projects are your only substitute for experience. So what should these projects reflect? There are four major factors that your projects should validate no matter which profile you apply for. So the first factor is your firm grip over the required competencies. That's mandatory. Then second thing is the complexity of the problem that you have solved or that you are trying to solve or you have studied, it can either be a novel problem or it can be a commonly asked or commonly used enterprise grade problem. Then the third factor is the domain expertise. The amount of research that you have uh, that you've done in order to solve that problem or in order to explore a new problem in the data science. Uh, fourth factor is your will to go that extra mile, how much uh, in order to make your project really stand out. So these are the four factors that really reflect your efforts and uh, it should basically your projects should basically uh, emanate or reflect these values. Then coming to which types of projects you should add to your portfolio. Now coming to the types of projects that you can add to your portfolio. So keeping in mind the factors that we have just discussed. So here are a few ideas that you can work on. Firstly, work with real data. So if you can show someone that you can work with raw data coming from different sources and you can answer some really interesting questions based on that. So those sort of problems, those sort of uh, expertise and techniques to look into raw data sets and then using them to answer questions that is highly regarded. Then exploring publicly available data sets. So you should look at a few uh, publicly available data sets, try to uncover some hidden patterns, use statistical modeling, do some research, uh, look at a few journals and research paper to find related material, uh, define questions that have never been asked before, try to implement it in various fields like finance or in healthcare or uh, to answer a few questions in so social laws. So that is also very uh, highly regarded and will definitely add some weight to your portfolio. The third idea is contributing to open source uh, projects. Now, even organizations highly regard open source contributions. So if you develop for free and open source software, that is highly regarded, will definitely add weight to your portfolio. You can try to uh, contribute to packages like scikit-learn, pandas, numpy, uh, NumFocus, SciPy, they, these are, uh, there are a bunch of open source repositories that you can look to, uh, you know, contribute. So contribute to these open source packages. Fourth idea, exploit your curiosity. Now, as a curious data professional, there must be products and services, questions that you find intriguing. For example, uh, a sports fanatic uh, can go about building a dashboard or a data infrastructure that manages the statistics and the performance patterns of all the players. Then, fifth idea, building end-to-end -end projects. Now, a great way to showcase that you are truly a generalist uh, is to build end-to-end -end projects. You know, don't stop at finding a solution or creating a prototype of uh, an application or a recommendation system or, a, you know, a chatbot. Uh, Go that extra mile, deploy it, share the link with your peers to use it, collect some analytics that shows how much you care about what you do, that shows to what extent you can go in order to learn the new technologies and the methods that are required to get things done. The last idea, skills specific projects. Now, there are people who are really good with cleaning data or people who are really good with plotting their insights. So. 
don't stop there just you know you should start to look to build uh, some python packages that automates those uh, plotting things uh, that once i uh, give some data frame to it it should just plot all the possible uh, pair plots or all the possible very uh, variable correlations or what any hidden pattern that might be possible for that particular uh, library or that particular data set uh, that it contains then uh, you should uh, if you uh, do really good data cleaning or uh, transformation then you should look to automate those uh, data cleaning uh, processes and uh, create a package around it to expedite exploratory analysis now i've added a list of a f uh, list of a few really cool projects that you can uh, look at Take some inspiration from it, uh, from all those uh, projects and uh, uh, get started with uh, these sort of projects. Then the timeline for the project, it should take at least like a month, two or two or even more than that. If you're building something concrete, it should not take you less. So it's not like an MNIST or a Titanic data set analysis. It's something that you really wanted to do and it solves some really uh, real world problem. So that's what's required uh, from a good project that you can add to your portfolio. How should you go about adding these projects to a portfolio? So the answer is you can, you should start using uh, GitHub more aggressively. You can provide GitHub uh, URLs to these projects. You, if you are into writing, you should start writing blogs that showcase uh, the report and other hidden patterns, plots, insights. Uh, you can do a bunch of things with blogs. Then if uh, you have deployed your application, uh, then you should provide the link uh, for uh, the employers to use and you know uh, play around with what you have built. Then you sh if you are into building dashboards, if you are into developing Tableau dashboards or Power BI, you should provide link to your dashboards as well. Step four is social media profiles. Now a good social media profile can help you land your next dream job. Now GitHub, LinkedIn, Twitter, Kaggle, Stack Overflow, Medium are some really great platforms to start building your profile on. So these are the platforms where people share their work, sentiment, their network, they consume uh, information from uh, these platforms and then they advertise as well. Now recruiters and organizations, they look for their next potential hire through these platforms these days. Now when I talk about GitHub, having contributions, having stars on your repos goes a long way. When I talk about Kaggle, uh, participating in competitions creating notebooks, kernels, data sets goes a long way, helps you create a really good uh, data analyst uh, profile. Then coming to LinkedIn. Now I've personally made uh, a lot of profit using LinkedIn. I landed my first job using LinkedIn. I, uh, I landed my first client using LinkedIn. I had uh, many collaborators. I have hired people uh, via LinkedIn. So again, a very, uh, very interesting and very helpful platform uh, where you should definitely uh, optimize your profile. I provided a guide in the description uh, which you can use to optimize your LinkedIn profile. One tip that I can uh, give you about LinkedIn is uh, you should offer help first before you uh, go about asking it. So Twitter, now all the big names are on Twitter. They share, uh, they write, uh, you can interact with people in your field. Some really good profiles to follow on Twitter are Dean Abbott, Andrew Angie, Lee Jan Lee Kuhn, and Andres Muller, who is a scikit-learn developer. So I've added uh, the link to their profiles as well in the description. You should definitely go about uh, uh, following them. Final step and step five is condensing a portfolio into a single page resume. Now, the most important element of uh, your job application is your resume as it decides whether you're going to get shortlisted for the job or not. So considering that you have uh, uh, every other element in good shape, your projects are good, your social media profiles are good, and you have uh, uh, you want to condense this all of this information in an elegant and concise resume. Now, 
the most important sections of your resume that you should definitely look to optimize are your summary which should be like one to two sentence and it should convey what you have been doing and what you intend to do in the near future then skills so don't feel don't fill these uh, up with random skills uh, that come to your mind you know you just should uh, don't mark yourself on these sections some people i see that they are marked like three on five or four on five don't do that it should be just a simple list uh, that should define let's say uh, i have python r sql tableau or whatever that you know so it should not be like more than uh, two to three lines that's it then third is projects that's like uh, the most important section for people who do not have experience so this should be like a major section for freshers as uh, you don't have much in your experience section so be concise about what you have done use terminologies that are really uh, really relevant to your project try to concise all of that information within just two bullet two or three bullet points that's it then comes coursework any coursework that you have done then comes experience if you have any experience feel free uh, just talk about what you have actually done uh, just in a concise two to three bullet points that's it then social media links don't forget to add your social media links to your profile just a one click uh, one click away from your profiles that really adds on to your resume so do that i've added complete guide to how to build your resume in the description below so do check it out i'll create uh, a dedicated video on resume building later on uh, so al also you can definitely comment down below if you want something of uh, that sort if there is any particular demand that you think uh, that i can fulfill now uh, i would be creating a lot of projects so i would be creating uh, a lot of project based videos on how you should go about developing uh, like end to end projects so uh, watch out for that if you found this video useful give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any suggestion thoughts anything and uh, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the upcoming videos and until my next video keep learning data science with harshit cheers